In this video, learn the four keys to mean reversion trades. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, co-founder of SME Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. In this video, Brandon, a promising developing trader at the firm, shares how to make a mean reversion trade in step-by-step -step detail with trades he made in Netflix and Tesla. Let's get to work on sharing these important trading lessons we share with the trading community so you can grow your trading account. This is a high beta mean reversion scalping playbook. This is a series of trades I took on January 24th on Netflix and Tesla. All right, Brandon, and give us a little uh, background as to who you are and where you are in your trading journey at SMB. Yep, so I started with SMB last summer as a junior intern, and I completed the junior internship and got invited back as a senior intern. So I've been doing that um, alongside school right now, and we'll be doing that full time throughout the summer, which I'm excited for. Um, I'm remote right now in Connecticut. I go to the University of Hartford. I'm a sophomore there. Oh, so you're in Hartford. So you, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I still can't get you to go to Lena's though, can I? I don't know what that is. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I th it's still in business. Le I think it's called Lena's First. And they have this uh, deep dish pizza or, or kind of Sicilian-ish pizza. And then they, you go and you take sauce and they put it on top of the pizza. So it's like this, this really deep dish pizza, then you put extra sauce on top of it, and then you eat it. And it's actually quite delicious. And it, it, is, it, it is a little bit on, off the beaten trail in Hartford. You do have to kind of know where to look for it, but it, it is certainly, it is certainly worth it. I'll look into it. Maybe I can get a few of my buddies in. I don't know if you know this, by the way, but I lived, I lived in that area for five years. So I probably, I probably know quite a few places that, uh, where, where, are you, where do you live? So I live, um, I'm actually about 45 minutes outside of Hartford. I live um, in a smaller town called okay. Torrington. But um, okay. yeah, school is in West Hartford, Bloomfield area. Yeah, so a long time ago, I worked at the state capitol in Connecticut a long time ago after I first graduated. I actually was an intern at the state capitol. I worked for the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee uh, when I was in, in college, and then I got a job, and I worked for the House chairman of the Judiciary Committee in Connecticut and the Senate chairman of the Judiciary Committee in Connecticut for the state legislature and the Senate chairman went on to become the attorney general. And I actually, after that, that job, I went to law school at UConn and lived in UConn's in Hartford. And so I've lived in Farmington, Connecticut. I have lived in West Hartford, Connecticut. Um, I've lived in Stores, Connecticut. I've lived in Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, I lived in Connecticut for almost 10 years. Yeah, you've, been, you've been all around. A lot of my buddies live in Storrs, Connecticut. Um, they go to UConn um, there. But um, yeah, actually, my, I went to high school about a few blocks away from the Capitol, so I know exactly where it is. Oh, you did? Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know if you know where Trinity College is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a, there's a high school attached to them. It's called HMTCA. Um, so you know the area then. So that's like real Hartford. That's like well. real Hartford. Trinity's real mm -hmm. Hartford. That's like no, 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 no joking around. That's the Frog Hollow section. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's that's the real that's the real place. Um, for this playbook right here, this is um, scalping playbook, um, and I'm looking to scalp high beta stocks. So the criteria I look for um, when looking to scalp high beta stocks is that the market is in play. So trading on elevated Arval, making outsized ATR moves, and trading on a catalyst. High beta stocks are also in play. So um, high beta stocks are stocks that are positively correlated with the broad market, but at an amplified magnitude. So expected moves are greater than the broad markets. And for these high beta stocks, the average 30 day volume needs to be above a million. Its ATR needs to be over one and the RVOL at the time needs to be above three. Um, for the mean reversion setup, the opposing side has clearly been in control throughout the day. Volume is starting to get shallow. 
the tape is starting to slow down and get heavy. I really like how you're making the distinction with Arval being above three. Mm -hmm. That means that there's three times the volume on a particular day at a given time than normally we see in a particular stock. So it means there's a lot of volume on, in, in the stock in a particular day, and that means there's interest. There's, there's lar large interest in the stock. So I'm, I'm curious where you came up with greater than three. Did you just notice that from your stats? Did you, how'd you come up with that? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So when I started scalping, it was, I started off with one and I was scalping a lot. And maybe after six months of scalping, I was looking at my stats because in TraderView, you can actually, um, you, can, you can look at your stats and see how well you perform on trades. Um, relative to the Arval done and as far as scalping goes I performed better when the Arval was above three um, so I made it more selective and I thought that can better approve my scalping and, and since doing that it's been more consistent um, for the mean reversion setup um, the tape is starting to slow down and get heavy starting to see the other side stepping in on the tape and by the other side I mean um, if, a, if, if you're looking to get long on a stock and the stock has been getting beat down all day and you finally start to see the buyer starting to step in, volume is significant on the first sign of reversal and then a clear change of character on the tape throughout the reversal and I tried um, explaining sort of what I look for and the process in which I look for it but it's basically the tape is, is quick to the opposing direction, um, it then starts slowing out and getting heavy on the opposing direction and then you see a complete stall out on the tape and you see it stall out and a bit of consolidation, um, then a slow on the reversal and then quick on the reversal. And, and at the point of it being quick on the reversal, that's you usually want to be in the trade by then. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. Yeah, so the bigger picture. So on this day, the broad indices experienced high volatility and significant volume. SPY and Qs were down more than 4% each, but both closed the day green. Qs printed 199.5 million shares on the day, one of the highest volume days over the past decade for the index. So the market was very in play this day. So intraday fundamentals. So Netflix was in play as it traded more than 20% lower the previous day after reporting earnings before market open. Netflix beat EPS, missed on sales, and reported guidance below estimates. Tesla was in play as it was showing relative weakness off the open, trading as low as, um, trading down as much as 9.8% by 10 a.m. on our vault over three. I chose Tesla and Netflix as my vehicles to scalp as they were both clearly in play and trading on elevated Arval. Netflix and Tesla were also both trading aggressively lower, setting up for a great mean reversion scalp opportunity to the long side and then later Tesla setting up to the short side. So Tesla's statistics, its average daily volume at the time was 37.13 million. Arval at the time of taking the trade was 3.61. Um, its ATR done on the day was 1.37 and its daily range was 60.89. It has a short float of 2.79%, share float of 804.08 million, institutional ownership is 42.60% and insider ownership is 0.10%. Yeah, I mean, I really love this trade. This is one of my favorite trades actually uh, as, a, as a trader. The keys to this trade uh, overall you know, you'll be able to, you can make some decent cash flow in these trades. You're not going to make $100,000 in this trade you, for the most part, but you can make some really good cash flow. You'll see this trade every day. Uh, it's something that really will build your skills as an intraday trader. I love the idea that you're working on this trade. It, it really teaches you skills that are gonna be applied to other strategies that you come, come up with as well. But the key to this trade is to just find these pockets where the stocks are overbought or oversold. You've got to see them overbought and oversold. And I would, I would say to you that if you can find a way to create filters for yourself to be able to identify when that's happening. So, 
you know, there, there are guys at the firm who build filters. So you're basically describing a, a way to visualize a mean reversion setup for yourself. There's a way to calculate, and you're really actually good with statistics and with technology, and you can actually do this in an automated fashion as well. So you can define what it looks like based on the visuals which you have up here uh, in terms of ATR, in terms of how much something goes up in time, uh, and then give yourself alerts for these to pop up. So you can create alerts to give yourself pop-ups for a mean reversion setup, and then you can get in there and you can wait for the tape to change. So the key is, it's really got to be away from a price that's, that's, it's at prices that are not sustainable. It's too high or it's too low. And it's something that's in play. People are off sides. People are off sides. There are people that are just, they're chasing in either direction. And for the moment, this is just not at the right price. And people are looking at it and they know it, but then it pushes even further. And it's so tempting to just jump in and say, this is at the wrong price. We saw that in PayPal this morning on the open. It was so tempting to be like, this is so oversold. We got to just jump in here. But that's not a trade. Same oh, yeah. thing with AMD. This, this is just too steep, too fast on the open. I want to jump in. You can't jump in. That is actually how you don't make money in this trade. You wait and you wait and you wait and you watch to see, let's take it from the, let's take it from the long side. You watch to see how the selling is on the way down. They're selling, they're selling, they're selling. They're selling in a particular way. This is not at a sustainable price. This stock has to go back up, revert to the mean. It's, they're selling it too hard. People are chasing it too low. They're just, these people are, it's just not at the right price. But you watch to see, it's, it, and I, I'm telling you, it's so tempting to just be like, let me get long, let me get long. And you have to catch yourself in those moments and stop yourself from actually doing it and turn that anticipation or turn that uh, impulse, turn that impulse into focus. And you focus on how this is going down. What is the selling pattern for how this is going down, specifically? And then you watch to see that selling pattern end, dissipate. And when you see, and you, you, as you're saying, you look for now this, the buyers to get in control, in my hypothetical, you know, or the sellers to just stop what they're doing. The annoying selling, they're selling it down too much, like you wait for them to stop, for it to change, and you can see it. And you can tell me in words what the difference is. And then from that point, it's at an unsustainable price, it's oversold, and now you notice something different on the tape. You can, you can see it, as we say. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a picture that hangs on the wall at s Capital. It says, uh, if you see it, swing the bat hard. And for the scalp trade, when you see the change on the tape, that's when you pounce and you get back in. But, but that is the key, is you've, you've got to see it and you've got to be patient and you've got to not give in to that impulse. And for you, you can actually build filters to be able to tee up trades like this. But this is a trade with edge. It is a, I love that you're trying to trade this trade. It is definitely something that should be in your playbook. There's, there's definitely money to be made. There's cash flow to be made in this particular trade. And you'll, you will, as you get a little bit older, be able to turn it into a, a, a longer term, more profitable trade. But absolute trade with edge right here. Encourage you to keep working on it. I appreciate it. And I couldn't agree more about looking for the, um, the turn in the tape. With this trade, you have to see the turn in the tape. For example, on PayPal today, if I wasn't watching the tape, there would have probably been five different times I would have entered. But looking at the tape and using your tape reading skills is so important for these types of mean reversion trades. No, and I, I was in that. I was watching PayPal on the open going down, going down, going down. And even having, been, having done this since 1997, I'm, I'm on... on at my trading station saying to myself, don't just jump in, watch the turn, wait for the turn, see it. Don't just jump in. So Netflix's statistics. Um, so the average daily volume was 7.84 million. The R vol at the time was 5.04. Its ATR done on the day was 1.44. Its daily range is 24.92. Its short float is 1.9%. Share float was 436.32 million institutional ownership 
is 83.20% and insider ownership is 1.5%. So these are um, the daily technicals for both Netflix and Tesla. Tesla is on the left, Netflix is on the right. And you can see Tesla, once it broke out of all time highs late last year, it ran up to 1250, pulled back and it was trading within a pretty big range, 350 points or so for quite a bit. And on this day, it actually breached the lower end of that range but ended up closing above. Um, Netflix, on the other hand, after putting in the highs at 700.99, trading aggressively lower, and then it had that hard sell off after earnings, and then this was the day after earnings where it traded a lot lower, um, but it actually, it closed the day higher from where it opened. So these are the 30 minute technicals. Um, you can see that they are both kind of similar in a way. Again, Tesla on the left, Netflix on the right, where you had that hard flush off the open. You eventually did get some buying. Tesla was a bit stronger. It actually got back above VWAP. Netflix tested VWAP, it rejected, um, but they both put in a new low of day around midday, and then they both rallied into the close and closed really strong at highs of day. And then this was the intraday chart, uh, reiterating the same thing as the 30 minute chart, but something I do wanna point out is how Tesla, it actually, when it put in a new low of day at noon or around noon, it actually um, put in a new low of day by one cent. So it was really just stopping out a lot of longs that had stops at low of day, continued higher. Netflix, it did trade a bit, um, a bit farther lower, um, but then they both did rally and they both actually closed above two day view up, which is um, this red line. So this is my trade management on Tesla. So down here, I got long at 854.53, risking 852.31, which was low of day. When the tape started stalling out, more transactions were being done on the ask. We had a negative 12.50 tick just two minutes prior, all with SPY and Qs showing signs of buyers stepping in. I took off half of the trade quick as the trade quickly worked in my favor and was up 2.5R. I wanted to make this trade risk-free and let the other half um, go as much as I could. But then I got flat once bids ended up dropping 867. Um, Tesla then did trade a bit higher and it traded up to about 882 and rejected there and I ended up getting short at 880, that 99 risking 882 um, the, once the tapes um, started stalling out after aggressive um, move higher offers. Wouldn't left 882 and Qs and SPY were re rejecting VWAP all at the same time. I then covered the full position once offers lifted 875 after trading as low as 872 and the trade wasn't working out how I wanted it to. So this was more of a defensive cover. Um, I, I didn't like how the trade was working out. This is the trade management on Netflix. So I got long at 357.19, risking 356.33, which was low of day. After there was a clear change of character in the speed of the tape, the number of transactions being done at or above the ask and how the tape was holding 357.50 after reclaiming it. Previously, when Netflix would break below a whole number, it would hardly reclaim the upper half of that number. Um, and Netflix breaking below 357, reclaiming and then holding the upper half of it was a clear change of character that I saw on the tape, um, which was a signal that buyers are very much stepping in. I ended up taking off size into weakness on the tape, stalling on the tape and levels of inflection. Um, and here's the trade management. This is, um, this is just two losses to show how I manage those. So. Tesla, I actually tried on this original flush here. I tried catching the bounce at 895, but I took it off as soon as it broke below. And then Netflix, um, I tried for the first time um, down here. And as soon as it wasn't working, I immediately took it off. Great, so this is um, kind of quick. So I'll try my best explaining it, but we have Netflix um, pulling down here, down over 10% on the day. Um, it has a low right now of 356.33. Uh, I end up getting long a bit after we hold above 357 here. Which was actually the change of character I was talking about. Um, we were holding above and then risk is low of day. Um, but you're going to see that we're going to get some real speed in the tape and we actually got this pop up to the 9 EMA here and now the tape is speeding up. A lot of orders are going um, are being done on the ask. Um, and at this point, I was about two points in the money. I took off 25% there when we were testing 360. 
um, but now offers lifted 360s and bids are holding 360s right now. A lot of orders are going through on the ask again and the tape is speeding up as well as the volume bar right now is actually um, at about the highest. Um, not counting the one off the open and we're seeing a pretty aggressive green candle here, something that we haven't seen all day. Um, at this point, I'm about uh, a little over three points in the money on this trade. Um, and I, I took off half at this point and, and now I'm, I'm just thinking I would really like to hold the um, the other half or if I end up taking off another 25%, I would, I'd really like to hold that as long as I could. So at this point, bids are above 361 and as soon as um, the offer is actually lifted 361, we skipped up to 362 in a matter of about five or 10 seconds. Um, now we're at the nine. Um, EMA and just a little bit of weakness here and you can see the cues pulled up over here um, When trading these high beta scalps, it's, it's very important to have the indices pulled up as well <laughs> And here you can see um, we're trading right below 363 on the, the offers they lifted a few times and dropped back below so that's really the next thing I'm looking for um, and if the bids can creep up a bit and then Tighten the spread and have the offers lift 363. That would definitely be what I would want to see. But so the bids now um, claimed over 363. Though it is looking, a, it's a bit slower here. Um, but you have to know that the, you've got to recognize that we bounced about seven points in about three minutes. Um, and at this point, I'm about seven points in the money, and I take off um, the other 25%, and I have 25% left on. Good, no one ever went broke taking profits. I think that's, that's a very important thing to do, especially when a stock is as weak as this and, and you're scalping it and you have, when you're risking a point and a point and a half, I, I think you need to find a balance of, of holding, but also you need to remember that if you're seven or eight points in the money on a scalp, it's important to take profits. And in about 20 seconds, I'm going to take um, the last of the 25% off. So watching the tape, I wanted to see how 366 would hold on the bid, see it stalling out a bit, and this is sort of not what I want to see. Um, I, I just really want to see the speed on the tape, um, but the bids were stalling out for a little bit. There, there's a little bit of speed here, but definitely a lot slower than what we saw over the past four minutes. Um, and then as soon as we dropped the whole number there, I ended up taking off the other 25%. Great, so the trade review. So one lesson that I took away from this trading day is the reward a trader will receive for adapting to new market conditions. One thing that has been a focus for me over the past few weeks has been adapting to different market conditions. One of the ways I plan on attacking this higher volatility environment is by focusing on more move to move momentum and mean reversion trades when the opportunity presents it. All in all, I'm pretty happy with these trades. I'm happiest about my entries and risk. However, I would say there is room for improvement on a few of my sales. On the Netflix trade, I took my second of four sales, just a dollar above my first. I believe I could have been a bit more selective with this one and ultimately took the sale where I took my third and held the last 25% up for a move to VWAP. Yeah, that's good. And so what you mean by that is we're doing some more momentum trading. We're doing more day trading than we normally do. We're taking each trading session as it comes. We're even taking uh, different parts of sessions as they come. So we're, we're doing a lot more short-term trading, a lot more active trading, a lot less overnight trading, and exactly. letting the volatility pay us. Exactly. We, we've been seeing um, some very outsized moves intraday, so uh, it's important to take advantage of that. Uh, you know, one suggestion is to keep a measure of VIX for your trades and you know have a playbook for VIX being above 20, 25, 30, 15 and noticing how you do with these reversal trades, the mean, mean reversion trades based on uh, VIX measure as well. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. And to further add to that, um, you know, something I just thought of is, is maybe going back to my previous trades on TraderView and seeing the best ones and at what levels the VIX was at at the time, and then I can already have some information on that. Yep, when VIX is higher, you're gonna trade with a little bit less size, you're gonna give the trades a little bit more room, and uh, 
you will let the volatility work to your advantage. Overall, the series of trades led to my biggest day of my career. I haven't ever fully appreciated the risk to reward you can receive from scalping in play names with favorable entries. Hey, well, congratulations. How do you feel? I, I feel great. Uh, I really. That's great. It. That's awesome. But yeah, especially, you know, I was talking to um, to Jeff about this trade, and he said there's nothing better than having a big day when the market has a big day. Um, so when volatility is higher and you and you have a big day for your trading yourself, then that's good. Um, well, Lena's pizza on me, if you ever find it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, Bella. Um, yeah, so these are trades that I will look to replicate in the near future if this higher volatility environment persists. That's great. Um, good work here. Excellent job. And I actually want to talk to you a little bit more about the great work you're doing with backtesting and, mm -hmm. and maybe come back and, and do a special playbook trade using your back testing, combining it with a pattern and show, sharing that with the trading community. I'd love to see yeah, that actually. Yeah, I, w I would love to do that. Um, you know, I'd, I'd get one, I'll gather it and I can send it over to you. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they are producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.